Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for taking this time with me. Thank you, obviously, to, to Games for Change. Thank you for the award last night and for the, the wonderful responsibilities and challenges that, that come with uh, being part of the family uh, here at Games for Change. Um, like I was saying before, I was muted. Uh, I hope that everyone is healthy and safe. Um, I know that we come here, and, or at least I do, some to escape what's extrinsically going on in the world, but I, I just feel it's super important that we just talk about it, about how we're treating ourselves and how we're taking care of each other um, so that we can continue to, to do games for change. Um, and thank you all of you who are making time in this room right now. So as you've seen, there's a link above. So a little bit about me. Um, there have been some, so many fantastic um, and informative uh, lectures where we take great notes. I'm more conversational. So I'll just tell you, this is going to be more live stream than conventional like uh, information for you. This, I hope uh, I'll talk about my KPI. Uh, so when I teach uh, USC, I teach in Discord because the young people are always on screens. So any of you who teach probably experience this where the kids are, are sorry, young adults are on laptops and mobile devices. So I love to reside in those spaces and I love to experiment and explore with communicating in those spaces. So I've actually made um, a Google Doc, which all of you can just jump into, which is the entirety of everything I want to talk about in this time, and uh, hopefully give you some visibility into where we're headed. And I hope that you feel the agency to participate, to ask questions, to connect with each other over this time that we're going to spend. So um, if you're new to Games for Change, welcome. Uh, it's an amazing opportunity. We're very excited to have you here. Uh, Obviously, it is virtual, and that affordance has reduced a lot of the barriers of entry to being a part of this community. Um, besides time, right, you simply had to click on the link and be willing to, to be here and engage in these conversations as you're able to, like whether it be just to listen and take it in or to ask lots of questions, whether you're going to meet friends, um, all the things, all the great booths you can go through. Uh, Back in the day, and hopefully in the future, we all had to go to New York at a very specific time to physically gather, which has its merits as well. But I love um, that there is this window this year through which we can all go and be and spend this time together while navigating what we're all navigating globally together. And honestly, not worry about the costs, right, as everyone's been affected economically by what's going on. Um, reducing the friction, like democratizing this knowledge and the temperament that we all share uh, is so important. And I just really appreciate and just very thankful to uh, Suzanne and the Games for Change team for setting us all up for success. Uh, so taxonomies. So me, uh, so you can understand a bit of how I think there's a, a lot of taxonomies that I like to use to um, explain how I see the world um, and to form a framework for our conversation. Um, so for example, like in, in this talk, uh, I have KPI. My KPI key performance indexes are hopefully the audience, y'all, connecting with each other and sharing experiences and information. And I also have a specific challenge that I'm navigating um, in my work that I'm gonna share with you that I hope you'll collaborate with and help me move forward with um, as we go. More taxonomies. So there's two kinds of table tennis players. And sorry, thankfully, those of you who are on the dock, you'll be able to follow along my train of thought much easier. So there's two kinds of table tennis players. If you love table tennis, I do. Um, if you've ever been to someone's house to play, uh, there's the people who you start to play ping pong with, and it's like the World Cup of ping pong. They're hitting backspin, they're hitting side spin. you're under the sofa getting the ball all the time. And there's other people who rally with you and sort of find your pace. And that's sort of one of my hopes for this talk. Um, it's not that we're going to go super, super deep, but hopefully I'm going to put some things out there. You're going to put some things back and that we're going to sort of find our pace together as we explore these topics of being at the table. Um, I have a personal purpose. I love helping people get from point A to point B who don't know how. Um, that's why I teach. Uh, that's what motivates my nonprofit efforts. It's what motivates any mentorship I do. It, it motivates me, heck, when I when I play dodgeball 
as a captain. I love helping people um, to grow with the information and links and accesses that I have the privilege to have um, exposure to. So more taxonomies. Thank you for your patience with me. So in games, and I try to teach this to students, and I, I keep saying this, I, your mileage may vary, but I'll just say it. I feel as though, um, much like when you play Risk, and I assume everyone out there has played some Risk, uh, when you try to hold North America, it's very challenging because you have to hold Central America, Kamchatka, et cetera. So I feel the same way. There's these four pillars around the game space, which are design, player customization of experience. And by that, I mean the agency that people need to have um, in their own character and identity in a game. Monetization, which is critical to all of our success and people even having access to opportunities like Games for Change. And then, of course, community. And by that, I mean the discourse around games and experiences. And whether that is in Reddit or Discord or in this chat or in the meetings that you have here at Games for Change, the, the discussion um, around game experiences is, to me, as important as the narrative. I think the existence of Twitch, right, where many, many more people are watching and discussing content than they are playing it is a is a key forward-looking indicator of how important community is going to be um, in the work that all of us do trying to drive change through our games. Um, another taxonomy I have around games, and if you think about any game specifically or, or about this Games for Change conference is discovery, experience, identity, and sharing. And by that, I mean, um, you think of all the games, you've heard of all the games here in the Game Streams Library, you may discover them. Some of them you may actually play and experience. A subset of that you will actually identify with. And if I ask you what kind of gamer you are, you'll start to talk about these games you identify with. And in that, you'll begin to share and evangelize. And I think that we have this fantastic opportunity here with Games for Change right, where there's a whole new set of people who are discovering it and having experiences, but how do we bring and continue to be welcoming to have people identify as games for changers, right? Identify in a year round way and share like all the good work and initiatives and opportunities that are available here. Um, I talked about humor versus comedy, live stream versus YouTube. So once again, this is just a matter of structure, by this time, you've realized that this is perhaps a little less formal than your normal PowerPoint uh, presentation. This is because, um, for me, like, uh, so humor versus comedy. Comedy is um, people who can go to a club and you've come after a long day of work and they are objectively funny. Like uh, Dave Chappelle, to me, right, is uh, comedic, right? Humor is born of interaction. Like if you listen to me and you know me and you share a clever anecdote, that's humor. And I tend to reside more in that space. I tend to reside more in the live stream space. I tend to reside in a space where it makes total sense that we'd be in a shared Google Doc as we talk about it. Um, why games matter to me? I'll tell you, personal story. So as you've discerned, oh, in fact, all of this is discernible now. I'm African-American and I'm gay. And what that means is that since my birth, I mean, since, yeah, cognizant memories, I've been taught a different set of rules to navigate the earth, to navigate interactions um, around conflict, um, around learning, around safety. Um, you are, you're taught um, the rules which you'll have to navigate the world. Games provide a space where I actually get to share a set of rules with everyone else. Um, games provide a place of equity where I get to be um, who I am in my entirety um, without the, uh, the, I guess, the, the pre-rolls of navigating um, race, gender, identity, socioeconomic, so on and so forth. And so for me, games have always been a place that I have desired to re to reside myself and to build for others so that they can be their best selves and be themselves in their entirety. Um, something I've come to recently is the idea of games as affirmation. 
a personal exercise that I, I did, God, just two days ago preparing for this talk was um, to say the words, black is beautiful, right? To actually say it 10 times, to say black is beautiful, 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 black is beautiful. And I had to go through the work of, am I saying this too loud or too quiet? Am I saying it in my head? Am I questioning uh, black people and black identities before I could even say these words uh, to move forward with my day, right? And I tried a second one, which was women are leaders. And I choose just specifically the women with an X. I had to look it up myself. I was like, let me look this up. Why women with an X? And it was like, oh, because this is an opportunity to put up uh, all women, women of color, uh, trans women, non-gender conforming women, gender conforming women, all together as one voice, like, and to disrupt the, the history associated with other spellings. And obviously here at Games for Change, where women are leaders, right? Running, running the whole show, running, running, leading, speaking, thought leaders, all of it, right? It should be so obvious. But I still found great power in just saying the words. And I feel as though games have that same power, right? The, through action, right? Through interaction, games provide the opportunity for affirmation around values. And so that reminded me of how I first got involved with Games for Change. So a while back, uh, Susanna was talking about my bio. Um, I was the uh, leader globally of the International Game Developers Association. And a big part of that role is about listening and, and understanding um, our game community globally and the different ways that people contribute to it. And so at that time was the first time that I heard the word ludology, right? And I was like, what? And I, you know, I was grown, but I was like, ludology, what's that about? And uh, of course, the study of games. And so of course, that led me to ludology.org and led me to that game September 12th, which I've, I've added a link in the chat, they, I'm sorry, in the Google Doc for you to see. Uh, for those of you who are not following along in the document, um, September 12th uh, is a game, like a flash game, but what it explores is uh, our perception of, of, of who's a terrorist and how to interact externally with communities uh, with weapons in an attempt to to impose our values um, externally. Um, it's real food for thought. Uh, I recommend you take the time to click on it. Uh, oh my God, okay, I need to go faster, I got a clock here. All right, I'll go faster. Fortunately, there's a doc for this. So um, I'll go forward. The point being, um, I was learning about it to get ready for the Global Game Jam. I want to share these links because I feel that game jams are one of the greatest ways that we all communicate and share ideas around games. So I've just shared three links that you can go to really at, at your leisure. There's this open doc, and so it's right there for you. I'll keep moving here of uh, being at the table. So um, at, the, at any table. We have table manners. There's a code of conduct when you register for this festival. Um, but there's even more. There's a responsibility to make this space inclusive and welcoming for all people around us. Um, as minorities and marginalized people, um, you know what it's like to have your eye on the door. That's part of what makes us share, right? We all have these shared experiences. People talk about race as a construct. It's a construct of experiences that we share. Um, and we have this this industry which often forces us to answer questions which qualify us before we get to bring all that we are to games and to communities. And what we have an opportunity to do is to continue to democratize these conversations, right? We have an opportunity the same way that like Games for Change, for example, made this free so we could all go, we have an opportunity in the way that we interact and treat and amplify each other to democratize games and to democratize the, the values that we want to bring to the fore and the questions that we want to explore through our games. Um, 
something I know is a little digression, but I think it's super interesting and I want to talk about it because it speaks to community. There's this paper from University of Cal Irvine. I've put a link here. It's called Chat Speed OP, The Practices of Coherence and Massive Twitch Chat. Um, I've also put a link to these 2020 Twitch research community. All of the work that everyone is going to do is going to be communicated about now. It is different than the olden times where we simply author work and it could just exist, you know, and be reviewed. And that was that. All of it is going to be around this discourse and our ability to intelligently synthesize and participate what on the surface appears to be indigestible discussion is a critical part of our shared future as people trying to drive change. And by that, I mean the same way that we're putting great energy into the research and into the way people interface with our games, there's an opportunity to be put great thought into how people discuss our games, how people share their experiences that we're creating. And I just want to begin to share these people and these resources. Some of them maybe are even here in the room because I just go, there are people who are so smart who are aligned with us that we need to be tapping into in order to be successful. Um, so, okay, I've got time. I made it to my calls to action. All right, success. So, I talked to you about what I wanted my point of this goal was for people to connect in this talk. So, I say an example. If I say make a friend at the Games for Change Festival, it seems simple enough, but sometimes the things we say may not be as friendly as we think they are, in my opinion. Because sometimes what we say can cause people to look back at that door. Am I welcome? Do I belong here? So I have a very specific thing called action for people to consider, which is asking questions which are inclusive. So my example ones are, how did you get involved in games? Who inspires you? And what's your favorite game? Because this gives us a chance for all of us to have qualities and differences which are additive. Add to discussion. When we remove barriers, we're free to better define a culture of learning. And by removing these barriers of entry, we can make sure that everyone feels welcome at the table. I'd love to do just one more call to action. And for those of you who were with me last night, you know I'm all about our hashtag. So I would love for everyone, hashtag G4C 2020. That's Games for Change 2020. You can use it, once again, by text, by Instagram, by Twitter, by Facebook, wherever you feel comfortable. But I just feel as though we're in this moment and we need to take this moment to let people know that we are here trying to move things forward. So I have three seconds. So I say thank you. We're going to continue this Q&A with a conversation in the impact room. I've put my links below if you want to connect directly. If this is not, you know, the format and you want to connect a different way, I've added links to the to the Google Doc, which is pinned in this conversation. And so I just go, yeah, thank you. Games for Change 2020. Thank you again for this time. And just, yeah, the privilege to spend this time with all of you. I just look forward to learning from all of you and connecting um, and hopefully being additive to your lives as well. Thank you.